if you wanted to pick an area to test an atomic bomb anywhere around Australia, or almost anywhere, I suppose, around the, uh, the Southern Hemisphere, the Monte Bellos were about as remote a place as you could find. The British were going to test their first nuclear bomb in Australia. It was finally decided that the bomb test would take place on board a ship near small islands on the northwest coast of Western Australia, just north of the Barrow Island and 57 miles to the northwest town Onslow. Three British naval vessels arrived in Fremantle, an aircraft carrier, a large supply ship which included landing barges, and a British frigate named HMS Plym, in which the bomb was set up and was to be exploded. The Australian naval vessels would also be involved in a supporting role. Much of the crews were regular crew members and national servicemen doing their six months national service training. Members of the WA TV history research team reviewed many documents at the library, one of which was a large photo album which contains pictures that were taken at the time of the atomic explosion by the West Australian newspapers. Because of the importance of the story, that newspaper had decided that a team of journalists and photographers would go north. They would set up camp and observation point ready to get the pictures and stories of the explosion. Because the assembled group did not know and were not told when the test would actually take part, it was a matter of setting up, sitting and waiting a few days, a couple of weeks. It turned out it was a lot longer. We'll follow the story of the expedition and the wait and their final success. We will show the photographs and tell the story of the bomb blast and what followed, in which they were able to send not only in Australia, but around the world. The story will be described by TVW Channel Centre Managing Director Sir James Crothers, who at the time was a journalist at the Daily News, and the photographs taken by the Chief Photographer Doug Burton and by other staff photographers for the West Australia. The Monte Bello trials, the first British atom bomb explosion. It was a quite magnificent expedition, which was masterminded by McCartney. We were not permitted or given any accreditation to go to the Monte Bello explosion. We got several trucks, four-wheel drive vehicles. There were at least 24 people involved. And we set up two posts, one in Onslow, which was as close as we could get to the Monte Bellows. We had some people there. And then we drove further north to Mardi Station, headed off the road west until we got to a range of big hills. We climbed up these hills and set up a camp on top of the hills and also further back at a billabong we set up another camp. This is in September. We took up a special truck with two PMG technicians and we registered a post office called Mount Potter because that's where we were and we had these two technicians who by Morse code sent our messages to Perth. The cameramen went up on top of the hill which we called Nick's Knob. Our leader was Jack Nickel and so we went up on Nick's Knob and we built a complete barricade because the wind just blew and blew and blew all the time. So we built those up so that we could get behind these and the people who slept up there, they'd be hard and sleeping level because there was someone on duty all the time, 24 hours a day. We built a little processing place for the camera men and big stands on which we put these huge cameras they'd put together to take long-range pictures. We were some 30 or 40 miles, I think, from where the bomb would explode. Now, we then sat up there pretty close to eight weeks, all told, while we were waiting for the bomb to go off. And McCartney had also arranged for the old pilot Jimmy Woods to fly an aeroplane to the Mardi airstrip so that when the bomb went off and we had the negatives, that was rushed to Mardi airport where Jimmy Woods got in his aeroplane and flew it straight down to Perth where it was processed and sent around the world. Meanwhile, when the bomb had gone off, the two post office men who were attached to us were getting our copy, which I was writing, and Dan O'Sullivan and a couple of the others were writing. There were three of us really writing. Some for afternoon newspapers, some for morning newspapers. And that was all sent by Morse code from Mount Potter Telegraph Station. 
And I can tell you, when the bomb went off, it went off at 8 o'clock, 8 a.m., and we picked it up fairly quickly, and it was really quite a magnificent sight, this this thing growing like a big mushroom, even at the distance we were at. And then it started to be blown north by the winds, and of course it was blown over Port Hedland and places like that. Now, the shock wave came through, and I have to say, I couldn't believe it. It was like a huge rush of wind, which blew us back like this, and the earth trembled all the way along. So, even at that distance, there was a very marked uh, and discernible bang and explosion and reaction from this. Of course, what we were viewing was, uh, say, as, as awesome as watching a volcano explode or seeing an earthquake. And what we saw was, uh, was certainly uh, awesome in itself. This uh, sudden flash and this huge pillar of smoke and the knowledge that here was a cloud at its base about a mile across, and that would be an area of total destruction. And that beyond that would be the area of death. <laughs> 